Welcome back to our math adventure. We are going into a little probability today. So when we're talking about probability, there's some new math terms that we have to um, discuss. So number one, there's two types of probability. There's theoretical probability, in theory what would happen, or there's experimental probability, where we actually do the experiment. Now the experimental, um, we've done before in the past. That's like when you're rolling um, die or you're flipping coins and we're seeing what actually happens. Theoretical, that's more the mathematical part. In theory, what do we predict would happen? It doesn't mean it necessarily happens, it's just our mathematical prediction. Now, when we create a probability ratio, and that's what it is, it's a comparison of two things, what we're really comparing is the event compared to the outcome. The event is what do we want to have happen? The outcome is all the possible ways something can happen. Now when we write our probability um, ratio, what we wanna look for is we always put it in the parentheses. So right here I want what is the probability that I'm gonna roll a five on a number cube? Well all the ways that you can roll a number on a number cube are six. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. That's my outcome. It's all possibilities. What do I want? Well, I want the five. How many ways can I get the five? Well, there's only one way I can get the five. So I would write that rate ratio as one to six. Now, we also have something called a complement. Every probability ratio has a complement. It's the opposite of what we want to have happen. So the complement of rolling a five would be all the ways we could roll numbers that are not five. So how do we roll a one, two, three, four, or six? Well, still I have six ways that I can roll numbers because there's only six sides to the number cube. But how many of those ways are not five? Well, five out of the six ways. If you take the probability ratio and its complement and you add them together, they always equal one or 100%. It either happens or it doesn't happen. There's nothing else that we, we can have. And so every probability ratio and its complement will always equal one. Now, just like with any other ratios, that we've worked with, we know we always have to reduce our probability ratios down to its simplest form. So if I wanted to know what's the probability of rolling an odd number on a number cube, so a, a, a one, a three, or a five, well, I have three out of the six ways. I couldn't leave my answer that way. I need to reduce that to lowest terms, so I'd always write one to two. Now, what's really new is you probably have not looked at how do you calculate odds. Odds, especially when we're taking a look at who's gonna win or lose a game. We often do it like with the Super Bowl, things like that. Well, those probability ratios are entirely different, and it's really based off those complements. So when we take a look at odds in favor of something happening, really what we're looking at is how many ways in favor that it could happen versus the other side is how many ways will it not happen or unfavorable. So we're always looking at opposites when we're looking at odds. And you can do opposites in favor or you can do opposites against. And if it was against, it's the number of unfavorable outcomes on top versus the number of favorable outcomes on bottom. Now, let's take a look at that in a real life situation. Say we have these numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And I wanna know the odds in favor of picking a prime number. Well, when I look here, two is prime, three is prime, five is prime, and seven is prime. So if I wanna calculate the odds in favor of a prime, well, I have four ways that it can happen. Now, the bottom part of that ratio is how many ways can it not happen? I have one, two, three ways it cannot happen. So those odds, that ratio would be four to three. Now what if I wanted the opposite? What if I want odds of not having a prime number? Well then really what it does is it just reverses out that ratio. So we're not looking at the total ways like we did on just a regular ratio. In odds, it's the way it can happen versus the way it cannot. It's really comparing those complements. So again, when we're taking a look um, at odds, 
we always have to reduce to lowest terms, but remember these are not improper fractions because these are ratios, so it's okay to have a bigger number on top than on bottom, but if we can reduce it to lowest terms, that's what we need to do. The challenge is up to you. Let's get to work on some probability and odds.